Now uh, reading the same video of chapter 46 by A.C. Bhaktivedan Swami Shila Prabhupada Krishna book Uddhava visits Vrindavan. Nanda Maharaj returned to Vrindavan without Krishna and Balram. He was accompanied only by the cowherd boys and men. It was certainly a very pathetic scene for the gopis, Mother Yasoda, Srimati Radharani and all the other residents of Vrindavan. Many devotees have tried to make adjustments to Krishna's being away from Vrindavan because, according to expert opinion, Krishna, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, never goes even a step out of Vrindavan. Vrindavan Parityaja Padam Ekam Nagachati. He always remains there. The explanation of expert devotees is, the, is that Krishna was actually not absent from Vrindavan. He came back with Nanda Maharaj as promised. When Krishna was starting for Mathura on the chariot driven by Akurura and the gopis were blocking the way, Krishna assured them that he was coming back just after finishing his business in Mathura. He told them not to be overwhelmed and in this way pacified them. But when he failed to come back with Nanda Maharaj, it appeared that he either cheated them or could not keep his promise. Expert devotees, however, have decided that Krishna was neither a cheater nor a breaker of promises. Krishna, in his original identity, returned with Nanda Maharaj and stayed with the gopis and Mother Yasoda in his bhava expansion. Krishna and Balaram remained in Mathura not in their original forms but in their expansions as Vasudeva and Sankarsana. The real Krishna and Balaram were in Vrindavan in their bhava manifestation. Whereas in Mathura they appeared in the prabhava and vibhava expansions. This is the expert opinion of advanced devotees of Krishna. Externally, however, they were absent from Vrindavan. Therefore, when Nanda Maharaj was preparing to return to Vrindavan, there was some discussion between him and the boys concerning how they could live in separation. The conclusion to separate was reached by mutual agreement. Vasudeva and Devaki, who happened to be the real parents of Krishna and Balaram, wanted to keep them now because of the death of Kamsa. While Kamsa was alive, Krishna and Balaram were kept under the protection of Nanda Maharaj in Vrindavan. Now, naturally, the father and mother of Krishna and Balaram wanted them to remain specifically for the reformatory, reformatory function of purification. The sacred thread ceremony, they also wanted to give them a proper education for this is the duty of the father. Another consideration was that all the friends of Kamsa outside Mathura were planning to attack Mathura. For that reason also Krishna's presence was required. Krishna did not want Vrindavan disturbed by enemies like Danda, Vakra and Jarasandha. If Krishna were to go to Vrindavan, these enemies would not only attack Mathura but would go on to Vrindavan and the peaceful inhabitants of Vrindavan would be disturbed. Krishna therefore decided to remain in Mathura and Nanda Maharaj went back to Vrindavan. Although the inhabitants of Vrindavan felt a separation from Krishna, the resulting ecstasy bhava caused them to perceive that Krishna was always present with them by his leela or pastimes. Since Krishna has departed from Vrindavan and gone to Mathura, the inhabitants of Vrindavan, especially Mother Yasoda, Nanda Maharaj, Srimati Radha Rani, the gopis and the cowherd boys were simply thinking of Krishna at every step. They were thinking, here Krishna was playing in this way. Here Krishna was blowing his flute. Krishna was joking with us in this way. And Krishna was embracing us like this. This is called Lila Smrana. And it is the process of association with Krishna most recommended by great devotees. Even Lord Chaitanya, when he was at Puri, enjoyed a Lila Ismarana, association with Krishna. Those in the most exalted position of devotional service and ecstasy can live with Krishna always by remembering his pastimes. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has given us a transcendental literature entitled Krishna Bhavana Amrita, which is full with Krishna's pastimes. Exalted devotees can remain absorbed in Krishna, thought by reading such books, any book of Krishna Leela, even this book, Krishna book, 
Our teachings of Lord Chaitanya is actually a solace for devotees feeling separation from Krishna. That Krishna and Balaram did not return to Vrindavan can be adjusted as follows. They did not break their promise to return to Vrindavan, nor were they absent, but their presence was necessary in Mathura. In the meantime, Uddhava, a council cousin, sorry, a cousin brother of Krishna's came to see Krishna from Dwarka. He was the son of Dwarvasudeva's brother and was almost the same age as Krishna. His bodily features resembled Krishna's almost exactly after Krishna returned from his teacher's home. He was pleased to see Uddhava, who happened to be his dear most friend. Krishna wanted to send him to Vrindavan with a message to the residents to pacify their deep feelings of separation as he stated in Bhagavad Gita Ye yatha maam prapadante tam sataiva bhajami aham Krishna is very responsive. He responds in proportion to the devotee's advancement in devotional service. Thus, as the gopis were thinking of Krishna in separation 24 hours a day, so Krishna was also always thinking of the gopis, Mother Yasoda, Nanda Maharaj and the other residents of Vindavan. Although he appeared to be away from them, he could understand how they were transcendentally aggrieved, and so he immediately wanted to send Uddhava to give them a message of solace. Uddhava is described as the most exalted personality in the Vrishni dynasty. Being almost equal to Krishna, he was a great friend of Krishna's and being the direct student of Brihaspati, the teacher and priests of the heavenly planets. He was very intelligent and sharp in decision. Intellectually, he was highly qualified. Krishna, being his very loving friend, wanted to send Uddhava to Vrindavan just to study the highly elevated ecstatic devotional service practice there. Even if one is highly elevated in material education and is even the disciple of Brihaspati, he still has to learn from the gopis and the other residents of Vrindavan how to love Krishna to the highest degree. It was Krishna's special favor to Uddhava to send him to Vrindavan with a message for the residents there, which was meant to pacify them. Lord Krishna is also named Hari, which means one who takes away all distress from the surrendered souls. Lord Chaitanya states that there cannot be any time be a worship as exalted as that realized by the gopis. Being very anxious about the gopis' grief, Krishna talked with Uddhava and politely requested him to go to Vrindavan shaking Uddhava's hand with his own hands. He said, My dear gentle friend Uddhava, please go immediately to Vrindavan and try to pacify my father and mother Nanda Maharaj in Yasoda Devi. And the gopis, they are grief-stricken as if suffering from great ailments. Go and give them a message. I hope their ailments will be partially relieved. The gopis are always absorbed in thoughts of me. They have dedicated body, desire, life and soul to me. I am anxious not only for the gopis but for anyone who sacrifices society, friendship, love and personal comforts for me. It is my duty to protect such exalted devotees, the gopis are the most dear. They always think of me in such a way that they remain overwhelmed and almost dead in anxiety due to separation from me. They are keeping alive simply by thinking that I am returning to them very soon. Requested by Lord Krishna, Uddhava immediately left on his chariot and carried the message to Gokula. He approached Vrindavan at sunset when the cows were returning home from the pasturing grounds. Uddhava and his chariot were covered by the dust raised by the hooves of the cows. He saw bulls running after cows for mating. Other cows with overladen milk bags were running after their calves to feed them with milk. Uddhava saw that the entire land of Vrindavan was filled with white cows and their calves running here and there all over Gokula and he could hear the sound of milking every residential house in the Vrindavan was decorated for the worship of the sun god and the fire god and for the reception of guests. 
cows and brahmanas and demigods, every home was sanctified by lights and incense. All over Vrindavan there were nice gardens filled with flowers and the sounds of humming bees and singing birds. The lakes were filled with lotus flowers, with ducks and swans. Uddhava entered the house of Nanda Maharaj and was received as a representative of Vasudeva. Nanda Maharaj offered him a sitting place and sat down with him to ask about messages from Krishna, Balaram and other family members in Mathura. He could understand that Uddhava was a very confidential friend of Krishna's and therefore must have come with good messages. My dear Uddhava, he said, how is my friend Vasudeva enjoying life? How is now he is now released from the prison of Kamsa and he is now with his friends and his children, Krishna and Balaram. So he must be very happy. Tell me about him and his welfare. We are also very happy that Kamsa, the most sinful demon, has been killed. He was always envious of the family of the Yadus. His relatives now, because of his sinful activities, he is dead and gone, along with all his brothers. Please let us know whether Krishna now remembers his father and mother and his friends and companions in Vrindavan. Does he like to remember his cows, his gopis, his Govardhan hill, his pasturing grounds in Vrindavan? Or has he now forgotten all this? Is there any possibility of his coming back to his friends and relatives so we can again see his beautiful face with its raised nose and lotus-like eyes? We remember how he saved us from the forest fire, how he saved us from the great snake Kalia in the Yamuna, and how he saved us from so many other demons. And we simply think of how much we are obliged to him for giving us protection in many dangerous situations. Situations. My dear Uddhava, when we think of Krishna's beautiful face and eyes and his different activities here in Vrindavan, we become so overwhelmed that all our activities cease. We simply think of Krishna, how he used to smile and how he looked upon us with grace. When we go to the banks of the Yamuna or the lakes of Vrindavan or near Govardhan Hill or the pasturing fields, we see that the impressions of Krishna's footprints are still on the surface of the earth. We remember him playing in those places because he was constantly visiting them. When his appearance within our minds becomes manifest, we immediately become observed in thought of him. We think therefore that Krishna and Balaram may be chief demigods in heaven who have appeared before us like ordinary boys to execute particular duties on earth. This was foretold by Garga Muni when making Krishna's horoscope. If Krishna were not a great personality, how could he have killed Kamsa who possessed the strength of 10,000 elephants? Besides Kamsa, there were the very strong wrestlers as well as the giant elephant Kubalaya Pida. Krishna killed all these animals and demons just as a lion kills an ordinary animal. How wonderful it is that Krishna took in one hand the big heavy bow made of three joint palm trees and broke it very quickly. How wonderful it is that for the seven days continuously he held up Govardhan hill with one hand. How wonderful it is that he has killed all the demons like Pralambasura, Dhanukasura, Aristasura, Trinavarta and Bakasura. They were so strong that even the demigods in the heavenly planets were afraid of them, but Krishna killed them as easily as anything. While describing the uncommon activities of Krishna before Uddhava, Nanda Maharaj gradually became overwhelmed and could no longer speak. As for Mother Yasoda, she sat by the side of her husband and heard the past times of Krishna without speaking. She simply cried incessantly and milk poured from her breasts. When Uddhava saw Maharaj Nanda and Yasoda so extraordinarily overwhelmed with thoughts of Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead, and when, they, when he experienced the extraordinary affection for him, he also became overwhelmed and he spoke as follows, My dear mother Yasoda and Nanda Maharaj, you are most respectable among human beings because no one but you can meditate in such transcendental ecstasy. Uddhava continued, Balaram and Krishna are the original personalities of Godhead, from whom the cosmic manifestation emanates. They are chief among all personalities. Each of them 
design is both the material and the efficient cause of this material creation. Material nature is conducted by the Purusha incarnations who are uh, who all act under Krishna and Balaram. By their partial representation, they enter the hearts of all living entities. They are the source of all knowledge and all forgetfulness also. This is confirmed by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita 15th chapter, I am present in everyone's heart and I am cause and I cause one to remember and forget Sarvasa Chahami Desani Visto. I am the original compiler of Vedanta and I am the actual knower of the Vedas. Uddhava continued, if at the time of death a person can fix his pure mind upon Krishna even for a moment after giving up his material body, he becomes eligible to appear in his original spiritual body just as the sun rises with all illumination. Passing from his life in this way, he immediately enters into the spiritual kingdom by Kunta. This is the result of Krishna conscious practice. If we practice Krishna consciousness in this present body while in a healthy condition and in a good mind, simply by chanting the holy Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, we will have every possibility of fixing the mind upon Krishna at the time of death. If we do this, then, then our lives become successful without any doubt. But if we keep our minds always absorbed in fruitive activities for material enjoyment, then naturally at the time of death we shall think of such activities and again be forced to enter material conditional bodies to suffer the threefold miseries of material existence. Therefore, to remain always absorbed in Krishna consciousness was the standard of the inhabitants of Vrindavan as exhibited by Maharaj Nanda, Yasoda and the gopis. If we can simply follow in their footsteps even to a minute proportion, our lives will surely become successful and we shall enter the spiritual kingdom of Vaikuntha. My dear mother Yasoda and Nanda Maharaj, Uddhava continued, You have thus fixed your minds wholly and solely upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead Narayana, whose transcendental form is the cause of impersonal Brahman. The Brahman effulgence is only the bodily rays of Narayana. And because you are always absorbed in ecstatic thought of Krishna and Balaram, what pious activities remains for you to perform? I have brought a message from Krishna that he will very soon come back to Vrindavan and satisfy you by his personal presence. Krishna promised that he would come back to Vrindavan after finishing his business in Mathura. This promise he will surely fulfill. I therefore request the two of you who are the best among all who are fortunate not to be aggrieved on account of Krishna's absence. You are already perceiving his presence 24 hours a day, yet he will come and see you very soon actually. He is present everywhere and in everyone's heart, just as fire is present in wood. Since Krishna is the super soul, he regards everyone equally. He sees no one as his enemy, no one as his friend, and no one as his lower or higher than him. He actually has no father, mother, brother or relative, nor does he require society, friendship and love. He does not have a material body like us. He never appears or takes birth like an ordinary human being. He does not appear in higher or lower species of life like ordinary living entities who are forced to take birth on account of their previous fruitive activities. He appears by his internal potency just to give protection to his devotees. He is never influenced by the most material nature, but when he appears within this material world, he seems to act like an ordinary living entity under the spell of the most material nature. But in fact, he is the overseer of this material creation and while remaining unaffected by the material modes of nature, he creates, maintains and dissolves the whole cosmic manifestation. We wrongly look upon Krishna and Balaram as ordinary human beings, just as whiling men see the whole world whiling around them. The personality of Godhead is no one's son. He is actually everyone's father, mother and supreme controller. There is no doubt of this. Whatever is already being experienced, whatever is not being experienced, whatever already exists, does not exist or will exist in the future. Whatever is the smallest and whatever is the biggest have no existence. No existence 
outside the supreme personality of godhead everything rests in him but he is untouched by everything which is manifested nanda and uddhava thus pass the whole night discussing krishna in the morning the gopis prepare for morning aarti by lighting their lamps and sprinkling butter mixed with yogurt after finishing their mangala aarti they engage themselves in churning butter from yogurt while the gopis were thus engaged the lamps reflected on their ornaments made the ornaments still brighter their churning rods their arms their earrings their bangles their breasts everything moved and kumkuma powder gave their faces a saffron luster comparable to the rising sun while making sounds by churning they also sang the glories of krishna the two sound vibrations mixed together ascended to the sky and sanctified the whole atmosphere here after sunrise the gopis came as usual to offer their respects to nanda maharaj and yasoda but when they saw the golden chariot of uddhava at the door they began to inquire among themselves what was the chariot and to whom did it belong some of them inquired whether akrura who had taken away krishna had returned they were not very much pleased with akrura because being engaged in the service of kamsa he had taken lotus eyed krishna away to the city of mathura all the gopis conjectured conjectured that akrura might have come again to fulfill another cruel plan but they thought we are now dead bodies without our supreme master krishna what further act can akrura perpetrate against these dead bodies while they were talking in this way uddhava finished his morning ablutions prayers and chanting and came before them thus ends the bhakti vedan purport of the 46th chapter of krishna uddhava visits vindavan now other chapters in next videos gracias mucho gracias hare krishna